Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, and I'm the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I have Katie Enright with me, and she is the uh, founder of the company um, Lavana, and she has a product called Ohi. And what she has dedicated her her life to is is to focus on enhancing people's sex lives through cannabis. And her mission is to open the communication around positive sexual experiences through her product that enhance sexual pleasure and orgasms. So Katie, I'm very excited to have you on the show. Why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so it's Lavinia and oh, okay, um, sorry. We, no, 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 that's okay. It, it's like, she's a, a, a Greek or a Roman goddess. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, basically exactly like you said, our whole goal is to enhance people's sex life through cannabis. Um, we've just launched with a silicone based lubricant called Ohi. And we're an R&D for all kinds of really exciting products, all designed to enhance your sexual experience. Now, like what type of product is Ohi? Like how does that actually help a woman enhance her sexual experience or enhance her orgasm? So it's actually a lubricant. So we use silicone. We use an FDA approved silicone um, called dimethicone as our base. Mm -hmm. uh, great for both vaginal and anal use. Uh, silicone lubricant is really long lasting. That's why I really like it. Um, water base gets evaporated. So you kind of have to always reapply. And if you're going to add a cannabis element to a water based lubricant, you have to use nanotechnology, which tastes really bad. Um, and aloe, um, 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 oil based lubricants, unfortunately, they're not con compatible. So we kind of wanted to stay away from that. So literally, we did about a year and a half of R&D. We did 25 different formulations until we found just the perfect one that had the best results. Um, but we found that it was really it, the best results were just silicone, THC, and CBD. And we did, like I said, 25 different formulations. I did all kinds of essential oils. I did all kinds of everything. I put like peppermint um, extract in one because it was supposed to be like a warming sensation, but it just yeah. burned. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's kind of how we developed it and came up with it. Now, is this really good for like a lot of women that are going through um, menopause, premenopause, uh, menopause and postmenopause have come to me and have talked to me about how they are experiencing um, dryness down below in their vaginal area. And a lot of times when they have sex, it's more unpleasurable because it's more painful because they're not as they don't have as much lubricant and, and, and moisture down below. So is this something that could actually help them as well? Absolutely. Um, so cannabis is a vasodilator, which basically means, you know, when you smoke weed and your eyes turn red, mm -hmm. um, what's actually happening is the size of the blood vessels in your eyes are increasing and the blood flow is increasing. And that same thing happens when you apply it topically below the belt. Okay. Um, so basically what it does is it's going to increase your blood flow. And anytime you have increased blood flow, that's how um, women have enhanced pleasure and, you know, increased blood flow is how men get erections. So it's, it's pretty, um, simple in a lot of ways, you know, it's biology, it's going to work as long as you leave it on long enough. Um, there is a 15 minute to half hour onset time that's really important to be aware of, because if you don't leave it on long enough, you're not going to experience the enhanced effects of the cannabis, you're just going to have a, a, a really great, you know, sexual experience, but just kind of more of a normal one. Now, can the um, CBD make you drowsy or does it calm you or does it just it just enhances down below and you don't feel any side effects from it? Yeah, um, CBD is great for pain. Um, so that's kind of why we, we, we really believe in the entourage effect, which is why we added uh, both THC and CBD because they okay. have different components to it. Right. Um, and they really enhance each other. You know, the THC kind of gets things going and then the CBD also helps with pain and inflammation and things like that. Okay. Uh, now, also, um, what kind of audience do you think would really like this? Is this for for you, the younger generation, or this is more for the you know middle age to older generation? Um, what group does can this really benefit, like people? You know, it's really interesting because it can really benefit everybody um, because it's it's really anybody that's seeking out enhanced pleasure 
is, okay. is this is going to be great for, right? Like it's kind of there. And, and there's so many different people that check that box um, because it does have THC. It currently is only available in the state of California in dispensaries. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of an important thing to note is that you typically don't think about going to a dispensary to buy your lubricant. But what's cool is that like adding the cannabis will enhance it so much that it's worth going to, to a dispensary to buy it. Right. So this is right now, this is available in a dispensary or can they order it on your, on your um, website? So it's currently only available in dispensaries in the state of California, but there are delivery websites uh, that you can order it through. So Good Tree, we have a partnership with that if you use the code, um, I forgot what the code is, but I can give you the code. <laughs> I well, I think you could tell me later and then I could put it down on the description. Perfect. That's you know, perfect. Be- uh, but you get, uh, you get a percentage off if you use, uh, I think it's like Happy 20. Okay. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, But that way it's delivered very discreetly straight to your home. Now, what are the benefits like by using this product, like someone that has never used a product like this, what benefits are they going to experience by using your product? Well, it's kind of cool. For the first time ever, we really have data on orgasms, which is really exciting. There's a vibrator called the Lioness, and it has sensors on the side that records the pulsing of the vaginal walls during a sexual experience. So you can actually do like comparative data and compare one sexual experience with another, because there's a lot of different factors that go into a sexual experience. You know, if my dog barks at just the wrong moment, my orgasm is like gone forever, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, And so what's cool is that we have like comparative data to show. So the green, is just a, a regular water-based lubricant. I don't know if you can see that. I can see And then it. The, the red is with our Ohi cannabis lube. And you can see oh, wow. the pulsing gets to be like a hundred. Like it gets to be yeah. so intense. Um, and that's, that's basically what it is, is the cannabis will help increase the blood flow. Uh, which is really necessary and is, is great for things like when, you, you know, menopause, somebody that's going through menopause, that's amazing. It's going to be very helpful. I think, you know, so many people are um, embarrassed to talk about it, but so many women, you know, even young women, like I've talked to young women and they've had sex, they enjoy sex, but they've never experienced an orgasm, you know, and I, I, you know, sometimes, you know, it it might not, it could be that their partner's not hitting the right spot, you know, because there are different spots in the vaginal canal that will, you know, induce an orgasm or, you know, it, it could be that they just can't get themselves relaxed or to a point or it could be also that it's not the clitoris isn't stimulated enough, like you said, the increasement of the of the blood vessels, so it's more sensitive, so it actually can induce that orgasm. Now, with with Ohio, you've seen a great uh, improvement in pe- in women's orgasms. You were telling me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's it's very interesting. I'm a firm believer. So, like, I grew up um, and I actually studied theology and almost became a nun. So I was from the school of like no sexuality whatsoever, right? And touching yeah. yourself was inappropriate and wrong. And I think that that really uh, hurt my sexual development because like I had never touched myself. So when I started to ex- experience things with other people, like I, I, I didn't know how to have an orgasm, right? It's kind right. of almost something that you have to learn. It's a relaxed state that you have to be in, you know, like um, when someone sees you naked for the first time, like, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm so hyper aware of how I look and, you, you know, yeah, that, how yeah. can you possibly enjoy pleasure in a situation where you're like, ah, but, but the reality is, is that I think it's, it's really important to like touch ourselves and to find what, find out what we like and what stimulates us. And then when we find that out ourselves and then we're able to experience it ourselves, when we go into, uh, when we have a sexual experience with a partner, we're able to bring that knowledge of what we like to our partner and also give feedback and guidance. Cause I think like anybody that's in a sexual experience, like we all know when something isn't going right, right? Right. We all know when it's like, oh, this isn't really working, but (laughs) receiving feedback of how to make it work better um, is something that I always really value. Um, because it's like, then I, I know how I can please you. And then the next time it happens, I know exactly what you like. And then we can try different things and play around and be open and communicate. Um, but I think it really fundamentally starts with yourself. And I think, um, I'm, I'm really shocked because of the industry. I'm in. like people uh, uh, talk to me very openly about sex, which I, I appreciate so much. And I'm always shocked because people say it and kind of with a whisper, like I've never had an orgasm. And sometimes it's like 35 year old, 40 year old, 45 year old women. Yeah. And, and it, it's, 
Um, and they say like, what do I do? And I say, start with yourself, start, go home to tonight and touch yourself and then see if, if you like the way that, that feels, continue on with it. If you don't, you try something else and, right. um, and really, but it, it starts with you and, and honing what you desire. And I think too, it's like the environment we grew up with, especially in the generations that we came from, you know, sex was never talked about. And, you know, so when you're in, like you said, you were, you were, you were studying and you were on your way to becoming a nun. So the environment, the, the, the information that was probably implanted in your brain throughout the years, you probably looked at sex as a negative thing more than a, a, a positive yeah. or pleasurable thing. So that was a big turnaround for you just in general. You know, but I like the the fact that you talk about exploring yourself because I don't think I think a lot of women are embarrassed to explore themselves. You know, like they they feel funny exploring themselves. But I think in order to know what actually stimulates you and what works for you, you need to do a little exploration on your own body parts and understand your body parts and what turns you on and what doesn't turn you on. And especially if you're with a partner that you're with frequently you want to you know express that information and that feedback to that person because once they know what makes you happy then they could you know participate with you and you could have a pleasurable experience together yeah i mean absolutely it's a lot of responsibility to give someone like you must give me pleasure but i don't know how to do it myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's i think it's it's that yeah in my opinion it just starts with yourself and and um and giving yourself permission too, because I think that that's the hard part, right? I think that uh, there's such a mental component to uh, a sexual experience. And it is so, we talked about this earlier, it's so easy to get wrapped up in your mind. Yeah. Um, and when you start by by exploring with yourself, I find that when you're with yourself, you're, you're able to just relax a little bit more and differently yeah. than you are with a partner. That's why I like when you when you mix the CBD with the THC because even the T, the CBD just absorbing into cl the clitoris is absorbing into the bloodstream I would think and then that is actually probably giving a person a common effect as well. It's it's um so it's it's topically based and it doesn't get right. you high at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but it gives you what it, what happens is like it's very funny. My attorney says the flower opens and so. <laughs> see like the increased blood flow, everything kind of plumps up. Like you can literally see yourself become ready for, for a sexual encounter. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, but it does take that 15 minutes to a half hour. Right. And I think even with a woman without anything, it's going to take them time also, because you just can't, you know, sometimes men don't understand, but a woman, it takes time for a woman to get to that point where she's actually ready, you know, mentally and physically to actually get close to even experiencing an orgasm. So, you know, just having the Ohi, you know, lubricant actually enhances it. It's going to take about the same amount of time, but you're going to have an enhanced feeling, which you you wouldn't have that much of enhanced feeling if you didn't have it at all correct yeah yeah no totally it's very interesting i feel like that's um i attribute that slightly to porn because i think that um our sexual education in schools is kind of awkward right i remember yeah. going in the room with like the gym teacher went in one, one room and then the, you know <laughs> yeah 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 it was, it was super awkward and super very weird. awkward and then you're learning about stuff that you're like oh my it's like mind-blowing stuff and then you're learning about it from teachers that you never want to you know yeah and so i think a lot of people don't receive uh, like proper education in terms of like actually knowing what happens and what, you know, t talking about pleasure, right? It's always yeah. talked about in the mechanical aspects of like, this is how you have a baby, but this is not, it's not like how you experience pleasure. And so I feel like a lot of people turn to porn. Yeah. as their as their reference for like a sexual education and porn is great in so many different ways but it's really important to know that porn is like two paid performers coming together that meet each other an hour before so yeah they have intimacy and they're also not doing what's pleasurable right. for either of them they're doing the best positions that get the most clicks that get the most money that get exactly. the most exactly you know? yeah and the thing is is like as an adult you can kind of understand that but if you're, uh, if you're, you know, very new to sexuality and you're watching it for the first time and you're seeing somebody, you know, insert 
themselves in, in, in someone else and they instantly start having an orgasm or it appears that way, yeah. right? Like you can see that and be like, oh my gosh, it, you know, if that doesn't happen to you, am I broken? Is there something wrong with me? Why is it happening to you? Also, if, if it's a, if it's a guy, he could be like, what am I doing wrong? I watch this and she's going crazy, but in real life, it's not the same way. Exactly. And I think that's one of the big misconceptions is that people, like you said, that don't realize that it's just porn. It's two paid people, you know, being paid to, you know, get the most clicks to get, you know, to show this, you know, basically entertainment, just like entertainment on a regular TV show or a movie. Yeah. And it's not, they're not really, it's, it's not true. That's not how it happens in real life. You know, there's yeah. a lot more, you know, when it takes two people to meet, you know, and actually, you know, have a, a level of intimacy, they have to be attracted to one another. They have to hit the right spots and, and excite the other partner, you know, and there's a lot that goes into it and it, it's not a one, two, three process, you know? So you do get a misconception by, you know, thinking what you see in porn is actually what happens in real life, you know? Yep. Totally. Totally. And then it can, it can be very jarring and very scarring too, I think for certain people. Oh yeah, definitely. I think so. I bet men, especially, I think are more sensitive. They always want to, they, you know, they, they get very insecure. I think from a lot of men that I've spoken to, if they don't please their partner, what am I doing wrong? But they don't realize that everybody's different and everybody has different preferences and different things that excite them. And, you know, it, and that you can't just rely on what you hear or what you see. It's really understanding your partner and understanding, you know, what's going to help your partner, you know, get to that level. Yeah. And it's about t talking about it, right? There's yes. it, it's shocking how many people do not talk about it. Right. Um, and I think that that's really key because when you talk about it, you can understand things and break things down. And like, um, you know, you're, you're literally naked in front of somebody. So you're in a really vulnerable situation and spot. And like, yeah. sometimes if somebody gives negative feedback or something that can, that can feel harsher than um, it's intended to, but it's like, so talking about it when you're not in the sexual situation about like what you like, or what are code words that I can say when to know just where to touch me or when to move or when to do this or whatever, right. so instead of saying, no, no, no or you know exactly. something that feels harsh in the moment yeah say oh a little to the left or uh that's it just you know it, it, giving feedback and positive reinforcement is is so important um and it also helps build your relationship with that person yeah I agree I agree totally I think communication is key and I think a lot of people don't have enough of communication with their partner, you know, again, because they're embarrassed to talk about it or they don't want to hurt their partner's feelings. But there's always a way that you could discuss things, you know, in a less harsher manner, you know, and, and, you know, so you understand, you know, you know, instead of pointing out the, the wrong in the other person, you know, talk about what you like and talk about, say, say it in a nice way, you know, so that other person doesn't get offended or get hurt by the comments that, you know, you might, you know, say to that person. And, and also if there's a fetish or something you want to try or bring into the bedroom, the more that you communicate, the more that you be open to telling that person, there's so many people that, um, you know, don't, aren't fully satisfied because they, they're not exploring truly what they want to explore. Right. Um, and they kind of just think, oh, my partner would, would not like that or would not, they shut it down in their mind and they won't even say it. Whereas their partner could be really receptive to it if you have a, a constant open dialogue and maybe they're not, but then you can talk about it and you can talk about boundaries or maybe some other ways that you can fulfill certain things or things that you can do to kind of like, you know, just increase, <clears throat> you know, constantly be talking about your desires and increase your pleasure. Right. You know, and I think that's too, you have to really, you know, what can you do to help your other partner enhance your relationship with you? You know, sometimes people are like, you know, well, you know, if we bring in other stuff, maybe, you know, they, they'll, they'll be more reliant on that and they won't want to, you know, you know, be so much more reliant on me. If you know what I'm saying, like, you know, like sometimes people will bring toys into the relationship or they'll bring the lubricants to, to have an enhanced orga orgasm. And then some, you know, some people might feel a little insecure 
are like, why do you need that stuff? You know, you have me, why can't, you know, why do you, why do you have to have that? But I think people have to realize that sometimes other people need more, you know, because everybody, like everybody's body's different and it's nothing to have to do with the, with the other person. It has to do with that person and what that person needs. Don't you think? Yeah, no, totally. It's very interesting because I had never heard anything about, um, anything negative about lubricant. Uh, but I was talking to somebody that was younger than me and she was like, I don't need that. I'm good. I'm what enough. And I was like, Oh no, no, this isn't like a deficiency in you. Yeah. Right? Like using a lubricant isn't a deficiency. It's like enhancing the pleasure. It's like, right. It's going to make it feel better. It's not saying that you're again, broken or anything like that. Um, but you're absolutely right. But the thing is, is that I think I, I really give that person a lot of credit because it's, it can be challenging at times to really talk about what you truly desire, especially if your partner looks at that as a deficiency in themselves. Right. Um, and that's where like breaking down communication, it's like, you know, that I think that that's having a, a really honest dialogue and conversation about that and understanding why that, that makes them feel like that. And then explaining why it enhances your pleasure and how this is the, you know, using a vibrator, for example, can be such an enhancement. Uh, using a butt plug can create a really great pressure and feel amazing. Right. Um, but it is sometimes hard to say, Hey, I want to bring a butt plug in. Yeah. <laughs> I did that once. And the guy was like, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't think people realize, but they are G spots in the anal, you know, area. So you could actually stimulate an orgasm by putting oh, yeah. a butt plug yeah. in, in using that type of toy. So we are actually in R and D on an anal sex product um, that also contains cannabis. And uh, anally speaking, there are so many ways in which you can experience such intense pleasure. Um, the 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 thing about anal is that, as we were talking about porn, um, anal kind of is the person who's receiving really has to have all of the control Mm -hmm. Um, because like a millimeter the wrong way and intensely it can go very bad very quickly and there's actually two there's actually two buttholes so there's an inner and an outer and they have that so that we don't constantly poop ourselves okay so the problem is is that somebody will get through the outer one, but the inner one is still tight. And so they'll push through to the inner one. So it really can be very painful. Like there's a lot of prep work that goes into having a really great anal session, but it can be super satisfying. I uh, traditionally don't have anal orgasms, but with our product that we're working on, I actually can have an orgasm anally, which is super exciting. So what type of um, product are you working on right now for the anal? So it's, it's a product literally specifically designed for anal sex. I'm okay. very excited. Does, now, does that, that, does that help like, um, also, uh, bring some, some moisture to that area? So if, if someone is penetrating the anal, um, area that they're not going to hurt that person as much, that it's going to be a, a lot gentler. And it's also going to probably, if it has the CBD and the THC, it's probably going to enhance it by even either bringing swollenness to it and enhancing the blood vessels. So it's more sensitive to hidden different spots in the anal that would increase the orgasm. Yeah. And th- thank you for saying that because Anally speaking, it's really important a to use lubricant because you can actually really, really hurt yourself if you don't. Um, a lot of people use like spit or you know whatever, but it's really, really important that you use a lubricant like uh, either an oil based or a silicone based. Water based is great, but like I said, it evaporates. Yeah, and it evaporates at just the wrong moment. Like you can actually very much hurt yourself. Um, so silicone is, is my personal favorite again, because it's kind of compatible, um, and it's really long lasting. So it's actually waterproof, which is why like externally we say to wash with soap and water afterwards, right. it's literally waterproof. So it'll stay, um, it'll stay on your skin, which is amazing when you're having a really long session and, or you're doing anal and you really need it to stay. And I don't think many people realize that, that you need some type of moisture lubricant, you know, before you have anal sex, if that's the decision you're going to make, if you say, I want to try anal sex, you can't just have anal sex because you could actually do damage and hurt the person if it's not, if it's not moisturized and if it's not, you know, uh, if the, if the penis can't actually glide into the anal canal easily, you could tear and do damage. So that's, you know. 
It, and it, it, that's, it's so important. Like I said, like breathing exercises and the person that's receiving being really relaxed. And yeah. that comes from knowing that their partner is not going to make any sudden movements or any jolts or anything like that. Like it's really important to have a lot of control over what's happening um, and doing a lot of breath exercises. And also it depends on the size of your partner, right? If you're with right. a really well-endowed partner, like that can be really painful and tearing can happen automatically if the person is, is very well-endowed. So I get to, a uh, I, I get to a, a point where <laughs> if they're too big, it's a no-go for me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now, when, when a person is having intercourse, like, would you suggest that before foreplay, put it on the uh, lubricant? Oh, hi. Is, is that better than just like, you know, in the middle, you know, just trying to put it on. So that way you give it time to actually absorb the, t- the topical cream absorbs into the, into the cl- clitoris area. Yeah. So we say 15 minutes to a half hour before the intended orgasm. So it it does just need that time to dilate the blood vessels and increase the blood flow. Um, It's, but you know, as you said before, that's like the perfect amount of time for a woman to get there as well and be ready. Um, And so it does. So we kind of leave it up to the person. Some people apply it and then they do work. And then like 15 or 20 minutes later, they just reapply a little bit more and then they go, you know, they, they do that. Or some people do it like as a foreplay, they, they put it on before foreplay. Um, it's kind of up to you, but that 15 minutes, that 15 to half, 15 minutes to a half hour is really important. Um, that's really the key factors for success. Like you, you'll still experience a great orgasm, but it's just going to be the green orgasm. If you want the okay. red orgasm, that's when it needs that 15 minutes to half hour. Oh, I see. So you could actually do it before foreplay, get an, an increased amount of stimulation and then reapply it right before, you know, about 15 minutes right before you're going to have intercourse as well. So then you yeah. have an enhanced foreplay experience and then you have an enhanced intercourse experience as well. Yeah. It, it, it just feels amazing. Like it feels um, like every, every touch just feels so good. And I, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of women that have had, you know, experiences using, you know, products like, oh, hi, you know, they, it, it helps them really, um, you know, feel that, that sensation that they wouldn't feel, you know, otherwise, but, you know, I like your product because you have a combination of CBD and THC combined. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, the two working together are really enhancing the blood vessels and really enhancing the sensation that you're going to experience. So. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you're yeah, welcome. We did a lot of research. We did a lot. We, <laughs> uh, a lot I could imagine. Yeah. yeah. Now, where, like, wh- what is your website so people can learn more about you? Sure. It's olavinia, O H L A V I N I A dot com. Um, and on our website, we have a, we have Dr. Um, Christina Collins is our medical expert and she goes through and explains like why it works in the body. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, like I said before, we have Dr. Paul Lassard, who's done all of the, um, all of the formulations. He's amazing. Um, and then we also have some social media too. So we have on Instagram, it's o.lavinia, um, and we're on Facebook as well, Twitter. Oh, excellent stuff. Now, do you have a blog on your website that maybe people can learn? Yeah, absolutely. And people can write in too, if they want to share their experiences. Oh, that's great. That's great. And do you have links where you said that you had, you have distributors that are selling the product that they could get it through? Are those links on your website as well? They are. Yeah. Where to buy. So we we're in about a hundred dispensaries in the state of California. And so if you click the where to buy and just put in your zip code, the closest dispensary will pop up for you. Now, someone that like New Jersey, we're legalized. So someone in New Jersey, can they get that product or is it only in California right now? No, it's only California. We are are working on a hemp based uh, line that will be available nationwide. Okay. All right. I'm sure in time, Ohio will probably be available nationwide. It's just, you know, getting everything, you know, legalized and, and everything. So, you know, but that's, that's great. I love it. I love it. You know? And, uh, so the, the new product will probably be available for, um, we're, we're January or February is our goal. We're Valentine's day is our, our targeted launch. Um, nice. so we are in R and D if you'd like to be in our testing group, we would love that. So we're, uh, testing our hemp based formula and then we're also doing our anal based formula. So if you're open to testing either one of those that we would love to have you. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> 
I like that. I, you know, I'm so glad you came on today. And now is there's any, any tips that you'd like to give people to kind of help them, you know, have a better um, relationship and enhanced feeling and, and a better sexual experience when it comes to orgasms? Do you have any, any tips to help women, you know, receive orgasms and, or enhance the orgasms they're having? Yeah, I mean, well, I think it's, I think if you use our product, <laughs> not to plug it, but I think that that will really help. Um, I think that there's a real mental component in, uh, in having an orgasm. Um, and uh, for me, what's really awesome is that this takes all the pressure off of the actual climax, because that's kind of sometimes when I have anxiety, where I have anxiety, where it's like, I have to focus so hard to, yeah. to have a climax, you know, everything has to be just perfect. And like I said, if right. the dog, you know, if there's a, a, a change of motion for two seconds or the dog barks or anything, it's like gone forever. Yeah. Um, whereas when I use my lube because the, the, because the, everything's so sensitive and the blood flow is increased. Like I don't actually even worry about having an orgasm. Cause I know I'm going to have uh, multiple, like with this product, I can have multiple. So right. it really takes me out of my head uh, and kind of puts me in my body, which is a really nice experience. Now, um, if anyone wants to, uh, the studies you're doing, are you opening that up to other people who might want to For try? sure. Yeah, absolutely. So my Instagram is underscore Katie underscore and right underscore. Um, just DM me if you'd like to be on the testing group. Um, the only thing that we ask is that it's if you're, uh, that you either use the product solo um, for the lube or uh, for the anal sex product, if you make sure that you've used it with a partner that you've had sex multiple times with before, because the first few times you have sex, there's so many different factors and very, exactly. um, but yeah, absolutely. Cause I think a lot of people would like to try it. I think a lot of people, you know, would like to experience it. So that would be great. You know, that would yeah. be great. Well, yeah. Katie, it's been a pleasure having you here, you know, and, you know, I wish you the best of luck. This sounds amazing. And I've, I've actually, you know, used your product and I've had a great experience with it. So, you know, I hope that, you know, I hope this does really well for you. And, you know, I thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me.